Hey, what's happening everybody? So I'm getting ready to get started on my van here. Um, I took care of a bunch of stuff on the engine and it runs a million times better, but I'm still popping that code. I think I'm going to have to pay somebody to figure out what that random misfire code is about to get rid of it. Um, cause I've done everything I know except for I was underneath and I wiggled the, uh, the fuel tank, the hose that goes to the filler. And I noticed when I fill up, I can't stick the hose all the way in. I have to leave it like halfway out for the auto cutoff to work, otherwise it'll just turn off. So I'm gonna check out the gas tank because that could totally cause it. And then uh, once I get enough money, I'm just gonna pay somebody, figure out what's up with this misfire code. I'll check this out. I'm coming down with a cold, by the way, so I'm a little sniffly and my throat's a little sore. Um, I pulled all the, the crappy carpet out and everything. I'm gonna clean this up. Last time I rebuilt this thing, these, a ton of people told me about this rattle trap. And this is butyl rubber with um, foil on one side. It does a little bit of insulation, probably not very much, but it gets rid of road noise. And the road noise in this thing is just absolutely horrendous. It's terrible. It's non... I, I can't do it anymore. So I bought some of this stuff, and I'm going to clean this front area and put it down. And uh, I'm going to clean it really, really well and then put it down. And then for the back, I, uh, I'm going to do the same thing on the wheel wells and... Then I'm gonna test it out, and if it's still not acceptable, then I'm gonna pull off my floor and either buy more or use what I have left of this stuff. Now I've seen a ton of people use this like 100% coverage, like they'll completely cover the floor, or cover the doors or whatever, but from everything I've read, once you get past covering 25% of a panel, it doesn't do anything else. So I'm only planning on covering 25% of everything, except for the wheel wells. The wheel wells will do 100%. Um, cause those get, when I drive through the rain and stuff, it's really bad, but I might have enough. I only got 25 square feet. I might have enough to do even the back area, which hopefully I'll still be able to hear my exhaust. Maybe I'll avoid over the exhaust areas cause I like being able to hear it. And then I bought a bed platform, this metal one, it's nice and metal. And then it's got uh, wood slats that go over it to hold the mattress on. And um, I'm going to have to cut this down because it's a full size and I have a full size mattress which will go this way just fine. But then I have no room to do anything. So I'm going to have it go this way and it's going to come out to about right here and then all the way back. And then it'll just be a big bed. My first design, that's how I had it, but I used a twin. So because it was cut down, I couldn't stretch out all the way. Plus I had one inch insulation covering each of the back two windows. So I wasn't able to stretch out all the way, so I had to lay kind of at an angle and my feet dangled off the side and when it's cold out, it sucks because there's like no way to keep your feet warm. It doesn't matter how many things you wrap them in. So this will be much better, plus I can have company this way. And uh, then I'll just build a foam cabinet over there and I've got to build one right here too. And in Oregon to get titled as an RV, all you need is a permanent bed and a permanent cooking area and I guess that a camping stove doesn't work, so I'll have to try to figure out how to pull like a little two burner stove out of an RV. Hopefully I can find one with a sink in it. That would be really cool to find like a, a sink stove top combo and do it that way. But just registering as an RV has so many benefits that I'm totally gonna go for it. Oh, by the way, uh, I have t-shirts now on my website, mugs as well, I don't have one handy. And I'm doing a sticker pre-sale. The amount of people asking me for stickers lately has been kind of insane. So you can order them off my website. I don't actually have them yet, but as soon as I make enough sales to order them, I will. Uh, I'm guessing that will be today, because last time I did a sticker pre-sale, I doubled what I needed to get the stickers in the same day, which was kind of crazy. So hopefully that'll happen again this time. Um, but be aware that it takes like three or four days to get the stickers and it might take a few days to get enough money to um, to actually order them. So the first 10 people that order will get three stickers for $10 instead of two. And it's $25 shipped for a t-shirt, $25 shipped for uh, a mug, and $10 for two stickers. Unless you're the first 10 that order, I'll give you three. Yeah, so I double checked again and made sure that my 25% uh, coverage uh, until you get the diminishing return, which means it's, it's less and less effective the more you add is correct And it is uh, at least from what I can read online So this stuff what it does is it keeps these metal panels from from vibrating like it's got a It vibrates and it makes sound and it, it carries sound and it even amplifies certain frequencies So by putting this stuff on those frequencies are eliminated because they can't vibrate uh, within the metal panels 
So that is huge for me. Um, like I said, the road noise was just terrible. It wears you out. It sucks when I'm trying to edit those sounds out of the videos. And um, yeah, I just don't, I don't like it. So I'm getting rid of it. <laughs> so um, yeah, man, stealth is just less and less important to me as I go on this thing. Um, there's almost always, I guess I should say usually, it's probably a more accurate term, a place where you can camp that's legit, you know, where you're not gonna get hassled. It's not very often that I have to park somewhere where I need to be super stealthy. But at the same time, I think that if you keep your, your van clean, you know, you open your door and beer bottles aren't falling out or whatever, you know, you just, I don't know. I haven't had very many problems. I've been woken up a few times, but I don't know. I kind of consider it just part of the game now, you know? It's just part of it and I accept it. And I'm not really that worried about it. So, wow, this floor was really dirty. So now that it's all swept up, I've got to find some kind of cleaner that doesn't leave a residue. And I think I might get the vacuum out and vacuum this thing up first. Real quick though, this is what I'm going to use on top. This is a EVA foam mat. It's antimicrobial. It's water resistant. Um, it reduces heat and sound and uh, I got it on Amazon for like 20 bucks and it's this huge pad and it looks like wood on the on the uh, the surface of it so I think this would be cool down here and it kind of matches my floor not really it's a much warmer color and the pattern's a little different but I think it'll make a cool floor for up here because it's really easy to clean uh, the old carpet I, I got sick of it man it just it gets stained so easily it holds dirt and it holds moisture and the um, the <laughs> Excuse me, my brain's not working as good because I'm sick. Um, the denim insulation that was down there, once it dried out, it would like, when you step on it, little particles of denim would go flying through the air. So I have little denim particles everywhere, including in my lungs. Like, it's not toxic, but I don't want to breathe that crap in all the time. So let's go home. Uh, I'm just going to do these two things, just the fat mat and this thing. And if I don't feel like it reduces heat and noise enough, then I'll add something else in between them. But that's my plan for that. All right, so I vacuumed this thing up now. Uh, I'm having a hell of a time figuring out what's the best thing to use for a cleaner. So I'm just gonna use this rubbing alcohol. It doesn't leave any, uh, any residue and it dries really quick. And I'm just gonna use some shop rags for that. And the smell of this stuff cannot be good for you. So I'm gonna wear my respirator and just wipe this thing down the best I can until it gets real clean and then uh, start over. I can't believe how thin these floors are, man. No wonder I was getting all that noise and all that heat through this thing. There was a while where uh, I had it totally bare and it wasn't even that hot outside and I stuck my bare feet on it and it like burned my feet. Like not seriously, like I need to go to the hospital or anything, but it felt so hot that it was like, whoa, if I keep my feet on here, I'm gonna burn them. So I definitely wanna insulate this thing, uh, especially for summertime. I got my heater working, by the way. Uh, it was the, the motor that turns the flapper. I got a new one. Man, that's really thin. It's thicker up here. Weird. All right, so it smells like alcohol in here really bad. So I'm gonna start this thing up, pull it outside, and let the, let the engine warm up the floor so it's easier to install this stuff. This is interesting. Oh man, I just cleaned this floor. <laughs> never driven without a seat before. This is crazy. Oh man, I can't see what's behind me. Oh. Look at this. Those are dry, those are old. There's no leaks on this van. Not a single leak, not a single one. <laughs> All right, so I forgot to turn my mic on for that part. Um, this is what one five foot, I'm guessing it's a five foot sheet will get you. I did this whole front end and this part. And listen to this, listen. See this, this piece is thicker than this one, but I don't know how well this resonance is gonna show up on my mic, but listen, it's a thud. No follow through at all. Listen next to it. There's much more follow through. Now over here, there's like a ring afterwards. It's a thump and then bing. Huh. Interesting. So this stuff is very easy to install. I think I'm really going to uh, focus on this area because this is one big sheet and it's got a lot of 
like rattly thump to it. Now I'm not too worried about the uh, doghouse here because it's made out of fiberglass. I don't know how much this, I don't know, fiberglass doesn't resonate, it resonates differently than metal. It's not a, it doesn't hold on to a long ping and I kind of like being able to hear the engine, but I do want to hear it a little more subtly. Um, I think I might stick a patch right up on here and see if it makes much of a difference. The rest of it's got this carpet with thick rubber behind it. So obviously they're trying to insulate the sound. I'll bet it would improve things. Um, maybe someone else knows about the acoustic properties of fiberglass more than I do. I know they make fiberglass musical instruments. The carbon, I've heard carbon fiber guitars and cellos and uh, used fiberglass and carbon fiber bows. And I know the bow makes a big sound difference on a cello. It's almost like a separate musical instrument itself. Drums are made out of fiberglass, aren't they? And those resonate. So yeah, I'll bet this thing does. Let's see what happens if I stick a piece on there. Oh yeah, I'll bet that'll make a big difference. I'm gonna stick some on here too. All right, for your reference, I got two pieces of, I believe, five foot. Um, this is how much that gets you. This piece goes all the way to here. And then one big piece on here, it comes all the way back to about there. Hope you can see my hand. So I'm gonna end up using about three pieces on the floor of the front area of this. I think one more piece will get me all of this up in here. So these tight little intricate areas like this, like this wheel well here, I'm using small pieces. Just cause when it rains, it just, this thing vibrates like crazy and you can hear it and it's real loud. So just taking little pieces, kind of stacking them up and doubling them over a little bit. Where that one go? There it is. Oh. There we go. Now that wheel well is totally covered. Ugh. Squash it down. Now there's lots of spots on this particular van up by the firewall which is real thick, but I'm still gonna cover that one with this stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there it is. That's what three pieces got me. I went way over the 25% uh, that I was originally planning on doing. I'd say it made a difference. Uh, we'll see when I actually go to drive it. I still got two pieces left. So definitely the back wheel wells, because when it rains, I can hear the rain splattering on them and it's terrible. Um, I'll still have some left over, at least one piece, I think. So I'm gonna pull off all the old um, peel and seal that I have on the doors and use it on the doors, I think. I'll use one piece on the doors and one piece on the two wheel wells. And if, um, if I feel like that doesn't make a big enough difference when I drive it, and I'll drive it before I do the bed, then I will pull this out, buy another 25 um, square feet, and then do the floor, the, the back floor of the van and the back walls as well. So that's it for today, guys. I'm gonna go lay down, drink some chicken noodle soup, and watch a movie. Bye,